Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. In this uh, or these uh, tutorials, I will show you how to perform single objective optimization of uh, building form, wind to wall ratio, and uh, shading devices for thermal energy performance. I will also show you how to create multi objective optimization of uh, building form, wind to wall ratio, and uh, shading devices for thermal energy performance and uh, daylighting. As you can see here, I'm showing you one of my scripts that uh, was performed uh, uh, for uh, research uh, before. Uh, here you can see the building model, uh, which actually is uh, very complicated. But I will not um, I will not do this complicated model of uh, uh, in these uh, tutorials so as to simplify the issue for you. And um, uh, here you can see I will also show you how to uh, perform uh, honeybee individual zoning instead of uh, uh, doing uh, just uh, uh, one zone or generic zone for all the uh, spaces, you will be able to assign each space a specific um, uh, thermal zone. And here, uh, uh, here the TT toolbox uh, is used to record uh, the values of the dynamic parameters, uh, such as the window to wall ratio and um, the shading devices and so on. Uh, in addition to the corresponding uh, value of the, the specific uh, uh, objective, for example, uh, thermal load or uh, the daylight. And here, uh, here's the window, but in this case, uh, uh, the windows were not manipulated, but I will show you how to manipulate uh, the window to wall ratio. And also here, the shading devices were, uh, were not manipulated, but I will show you how to uh, manipulate the shading devices. And um, here, the EPW file used for the specific uh, uh, city. And uh, uh, of course, how to visualize the model in the beginning and how to visualize it at the end uh, when you have uh, data for the thermal load and you have data for daylighting um, and so on. And uh, here I will also show you how to assign a specific materials for a specific climate. And here, as you can see, here's the octopus and it's connected to the values of the dynamic parameters that were performed. Uh, these dynamic parameters were mainly for the building form. And, and there are too many because, as I, as I told you, it, it was um, a too complicated um, uh, case study. Um, and uh, here, the objective functions are, as you can see here, are connected to Octopus. We have these values. And so uh, let's start. So as I told you, this was an old um, uh, project that I did uh, before for my uh, um, uh, research. Um, so now, um, uh, as you can see here, we need the, you, you need to make sure that you're using the meters in the Rhino. Uh, and in order to change uh, this, you have a uh, right click, then unit settings, and you can choose meters from here. So, okay. And as I told you also, this uh, was a very complicated uh, model uh, that we're not going to uh, uh, use uh, for sure. But I need first to turn off the simulation so that we do not have the model simulated during uh, uh, the tutorials. I will turn off the simulation for the daylighting too. And and now I will remove uh, the model from Grasshopper. All these components represent uh, the model, the building model. I have deleted them. And then I will start uh, doing a simple uh, form. So here I will choose a box. And as you can see here, we have the meters and each box is one meter by one meter. So I will assume that we have, uh, I will first uh, turn off the grid uh, snap. And then I will assume that we have a core, which is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, five uh, by five uh, with a height uh, three meters and surrounded by 
make sure that you're, you're, you're drawing the boxes or the zones of your building attached to each other's without any um, uh, spaces because this actually will cause uh, the, the model uh, or the simulation engine not to run uh, well or actually it will not run uh, in a good way. So I will start to make uh, four, uh, four rooms that surround the core. Each room is uh, five uh, by 10 meters. And uh, of course, uh, they have the same height. Uh, so now I will select all these uh, zones and copy uh, them in order to create second or the first floor. An important issue is uh, how do you render or how do you present your brick? Sometimes you might get a major review for in a journal, for example, uh, due to uh, um, uh, the clarity of uh, your uh, figures. So here you can use um, uh, the, the option uh, display options. And as you can see here, we are in the shaded uh, um, um, uh, choice. So here I will use a solid color for the background. I will choose white. Uh, so here the model appears in a better way and also I can change uh, I change this after finishing after I can change this grid uh, not I, I will choose not to have a grid so that I will uh, present my model in a clearer way and uh, as you can see here we have the north direction so I will start to model the building form inside the grasshopper so here I will choose wrap then I will connect, uh, for example, this B rep. Again, another B rep. I'm choosing separate uh, B reps because I want to manipulate uh, the boxes uh, separately. I don't. I don't want to treat them all equally. So here I will choose the set one P rep again. Again, yeah. uh, now you can select these boxes inside Rhino and choose to hide them. But you can see uh, the other boxes in the ground floor. And here also you can align uh, your components. Again here, um, I will start to assign so now we have uh, all the components uh, of the model and here I will choose to hide just to hide the um, ground floor. And now let's assume we want to manipulate uh, the height of uh, the boxes in the first floor. Uh, so I will choose or bring scale new from in, in the canvas. And here I will hook up one of the boxes to the geometry. And in the base plan, uh, I will hook up a point and put this point in the corner of the box. In order to put it in the order of the box, I will need to hide swap, which brings back uh, the hidden uh, um, geometries inside the uh, Rhino grasshopper. And here I will put a point here in the corner and set one point. Again, I will hide this one. And here you have the X, Y, and Z. Uh, we will not manipulate the Y and, and X. We just uh, want to manipulate uh, the Z. Let's assume we, we choose 
uh, two, which will be uh, double uh, the height of the box. As you can see here, it's doubled. But uh, let's say that two is too much and three also. Uh, because three will make the box uh, this uh, space uh, nine meters in height. So I will edit. I will edit this. And let's say x uh, times 0.5. And I will start by 2 so that we have 1 and maybe 1.5. So now it's fixed. And as you can see, the box moves in its direction. Let's assume we don't have this point. You can see that the box has changed its position. So that's why we add the point. Um, so let's do this for the rest of the boxes in uh, this uh, floor in the first floor. Uh, maybe in order not to increase the calculation time of um, our experiment, I might do it for just uh, maybe three boxes. So now we have this option of increasing the height of some of the zones in the in the first floor. And these are called uh, the values for the dynamic parameter, which is uh, the roof of the building. So let's assume that uh, these are Perform dynamic um, parameter. These are the values for this uh, form dynamic parameter, which is the roof. And now uh, let's take this all as um, and group it as the model. <clears throat> 